Hello Rockville, here's what you need to know about your city. Rockville's 63rd mayor and council have been inaugurated. Public works crews get behind the wheel of a snowplow simulator and we're talking basketball for winter break. All that and more for this edition of Rockville's 11. It's official, Rockville has a new mayor and council. They are recently inaugurated at the Rockville Senior Center. We had the chance to find out more about their plans for the next two years for our number 11 story. Can you tell us, Mayor, about uh, what you're looking forward to for your next term? I'm looking forward to being a fiscal conservative. I will certainly be watching the purse strings very carefully with the economy being in the shape it's in and the citizens of this city everywhere are feeling the pinch. Oh, uh, looking forward to a great uh, start to the new session of the Mayor and Council. Uh, I think there's lots of great ideas that folks have been uh, uh, passing around both through the campaign and subsequently, and uh, I, I think this is a good group of folks, uh, so I, I'm hopeful that uh, we'll be able to work together well and, uh, and get things off to a great start tonight. I'm very excited. It's, uh, this is, it's been a couple weeks since the election and it hasn't really worn off. Uh, it's, it's such a great honor to be able to serve the people of Rockville on the council and, uh, and be with my family and friends and celebrate this night. We need to continue the good work with um, the outreach to the county council, to uh, Montgomery College, to MCPS. Um, we're getting a new elementary school, number five, over on Edmonston, uh, and I think that's going to take a lot of interfacing between us and the school district and getting things going. And we have, you know, the need of a new um, addition at Julius West, and the conversations come up about the cafeteria size. And there's a lot of things that we can work on, and if we work together, we'll get it done well. Well, I think we still need to worry about our economy and how Rockville fits into that. And um, you know, I'm, I'm very big on, you know, can Rockville sustain its services for the next decade or two? Rockville takes safety seriously for its employees. That's why the city recently launched a brand new snowplow training program for public works drivers. We had the chance to find out more about this exciting new program for our number 10 story. Snowplow operator Greg LaCroix faced whiteout conditions, dodged pedestrians, and parked vehicles all within the confines of a 40-foot trailer known as the Snowplow Simulator. Uh, basically, any training, like technical training, could be will improve anybody's skill. I don't care if you've been here for years, but new training always going to help in the long run. This video game style training is part of a $9,000 grant from the city's local government insurance trust, or LEGIT, which brought in L3 Communications to provide simulation training and e-learning for 28 City of Rockville Public Works employees. It's a risk-free atmosphere. That's the best part of it. If they crash in here, nobody gets hurt, nothing gets destroyed. All we do is we talk about whatever the situation was that created the bad decision. And we work at that. Work with that. We modify behavior. Is what we do. So, what are some of the driving conditions snowplow operators typically encounter? You have poor visibility. You have poor road conditions. Uh, and they're uh, depending. There may be a lot of wind involved with it. There's a lot of snow involved with it. And uh, then you have uh, the other drivers, which is a major factor. They are not professionals. Back during the winter of 2010, the city spent more than $5,000 on property damage from snow removal accidents. That's a stat safety and risk manager Mark Gaudet is hoping to change with this type of training. Well, we're looking at reducing the cost. Uh, we'll want to reduce the cost of accidents, reduce the cost of uh, fuel, as well as reduce the cost of incidents that citizens are receiving. Godet says with this type of training, drivers should be 50% less likely to have a crash on Rockville's 160 miles of roads. We want to provide safety to all our employees as well as to the citizens and reduce the cost. So we want to show everybody that we're trying to be proactive and being safe. The city recently hosted an event called Heart to Heart, which urged Latina women to learn more about heart health. Our special correspondent Regina Reese was there to cover it for our number nine story. I'm Rockville 11's Regina Reese. Today, health organizations are calling heart disease the number one killer among women in the U.S. and in the world, with minority women being at the top of this list. The city of Rockville is doing their part in bringing awareness to this silent killer with a special event in downtown Rockville. De corazón a corazón, heart to heart was an evening of dancing, singing, fashion, and fellowship, all in the name of heart health. It's a very special event uh, that is geared towards Latino women, and this event has a very important uh, topic or theme. Basically, is to uh, encourage Latino women to take care of their own health. Senior Neighborhood Resources Coordinator, 
Carmen Cordero has led the event in its second year and says it holds a special place in his heart. It made me think about my family and, you know, what could I do actually to help them to actually live longer and to prevent uh, an early death or the uh, fatalities or accidents and so forth. So that's what is very important for me. It just really uh, hits really close to home. And others can relate. My father died of heart disease and uh, created a very big impression on me to see him suffering. So uh, anything that really promotes health. Because my grandmother has it, and um, I, so I really was interested in it. Executive Director of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce from Montgomery County, Paulina Muncy, shed some light on why minority women are at a higher risk for heart disease. Because they don't know where to go. They don't know where to go to get medical attention. They don't necessarily um, have health insurance. Um, and so we want to facilitate that and tell them that it is important for them to be aware of the risks and it is important for them to go to the doctor and get checkups and it is important for them to take care of themselves. Informative presentations and open dialogues played key roles in the event. Community education specialist of the Washington Regional Transplant Community, Freddie Medina, believes in the power of educating when it comes to preventing. Stay in shape, eat healthy, uh, you know, go to the doctors uh, and get checkups regularly, uh, just to ensure that you're healthy. That way you would avoid uh, be, be, uh, going into the transplant waiting list. Know your numbers when it comes to blood pressure and cholesterol, warns Mariana Eberly Blaylock of the Heart Truth Campaign and National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. Why do they call heart disease the silent killer? Again, because it's hard to find, to get symptoms out of heart disease. Heart attack, yes, but heart disease, you don't know until it happens. For Rockville 11, I'm Regina Reese. The Rockville Art League exhibits their show every December at Glenview Mansion. We had the chance to find out more from arts program specialist Julie Farrell for our number eight story. There's a plexiglass top here. When so it comes to art, Julie Farrell likes to get up close and personal. She's preparing for the December Rockville Art League exhibit. It's always a juried show for Rockville Art League. They come in every May and every December, and people flock in December to come to their show because they often buy Christmas presents here or presents for other holidays. It's a big deal. The Glenview Gallery is a unique experience for visitors, but also for the artists. The artists love coming here, number one, because it's not like a regular art gallery. It wasn't built to be an art gallery, so it has a different feeling. The art shows maybe like it would show in somebody's home, so people can actually see what a piece of art looks like hanging over a mantle, mantelpiece. Um, people can actually see what the sunlight does to a piece of art, and they can imagine that in their own homes. Rockville Art League President Lillian Blum is an artist herself and stressed the importance of art in everyday life. I think art adds a whole other dimension to your life. I mean, if you go into a house and there's only bare walls, you really feel like there's something missing. Also, people being involved in the arts find a way to express themselves and it brings a whole other dimension to life. Um, I think that what we have left from cultures in the past is their art. And I think any society that thinks of itself as a great society should be a supporter of the arts. The Rockville Art League December exhibit will be taking place on the second floor of Glenview Mansion. It's a mixed media juried member show happening December 4th through January 3rd. Julie Farrell wants you to stop by. We have excellent name recognition in the area because there are not that many galleries right in Rockville and this is surrounded by such beautiful grounds that it's really, in not only just coming to a gallery to experience the art, it's really an entire experience. The grounds are so beautiful and so well maintained that the whole feeling of the place is comforting and, and relaxing. We go on patrol to learn more about Maryland's distracted driving law, which recently became more strict for our number seven story. That's very dangerous. Uh, distracted driving, not just cell phones, is a big cause of accidents. And, and at least with this legislation, we can take care of the cell phone and the texting issue. Rockville City Police Sergeant Andy Crawford thinks Maryland's more stringent cell phone law will make a difference on the road. A couple years ago, they put in the no texting while driving, and it was a secondary violation. Last year they added the cell phone, which is also a secondary violation, and this year they just changed it to say that 
If you're texting while you're driving, that's the only reason that a police officer needs to pull you over. So what does the law say now exactly? Text messaging is prohibited for all drivers, handheld cell phone use is banned for all drivers with fines between $40 and $100, and drivers under the age of 18 and drivers with learner's permits are prohibited from using cell phones, including hands-free. You can talk on hands-free devices, but you can't hold anything in your hand. No texting, emails, or Facebooking. And what about emergency personnel or uh, other officers like yourself? Uh, what are the rules uh, in terms of cell phone usage? Well, public safety is exempt from this legislation, and uh, as is the public if they're dialing 911 or texting 911 if they're hearing impaired. But uh, yeah, it doesn't uh, specifically apply to law, uh, public safety. Sergeant Crawford often catches drivers in the act on the road. You see people on their phones all the time, you know, and then they'll they'll look over and see your police officer and they'll just drop it on the phone, on the floor. But yeah, we see it. Uh, it's still very prevalent out there. Hopefully, this new law will change that. For more information about the Rockville City Police, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash police. Starting January 1st, a five cent back tax will be in effect for all of Montgomery County businesses. That includes for the city of Rockville. We wanted to find out more from the city's environmental management division on what this means for Rockville's environment for our number six story. Rockville sits on multiple watersheds, which all lead to the Chesapeake Bay. Plastic bags can cause dire consequences for the health of these streams, but keeping our waterways healthy is one of the goals of a new county carryout bag law. The reason why they're doing this is they want to cut back on the amount of plastic litter in the form of plastic bags that we see in our environment. Um, a lot of times plastic bags are a major uh, source of litter in our streams and on our streets. Because there's a fee associated with the bag law, hopefully county shoppers will think twice. It might help a little bit. Um, five cents per bag, I know that I'm going to think more carefully about do I have my reusable bags or not, so I just think definitely. In Washington, D.C., they saw great changes in the number of plastic bags that they found in their environment. There's a great reduction of about 65 percent in the amount of plastic bags used in the district. Rockville is hoping the health of their streams will benefit from the new law. This year, volunteers from the city's Adopt-A-Stream program collected over 500 bags of trash. 500 bags that are no longer harming the environment. When we find plastic bags in the stream, they can trap fish, they can trap birds. A lot of times our wildlife will mistakenly eat uh, plastic bags or other plastic products, and that can be really dangerous for them because um, it gets lodged in their stomachs. So it can be a pretty dangerous situation for a lot of our wildlife. So can this bag tax really make a difference? Well, I think the bag tax is going to be a good thing for Rockville in terms of reducing the number of bags that we're seeing in our environment, which is going to be a good thing for Rockville and for the county as a whole. For more information about the city's environmental management division, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash environment. Every year on the 11th day of November at 11 a.m., the city recognizes those who have served in our nation's armed forces at a Veterans Day ceremony at Veterans Park. Our Isaac Asari was there to cover the event for our number five story. here today because my grandpa was in the Vietnam War and he actually participated in it and since he was not able to be here today I came it for him. We want to remember how they spent their time in the military while others were sitting at home. Um, you're reminded of all the people who have given to this country, given their lives, given their patriotism, in a way given their psyche. And some of these young people come back from those experiences and they're not the same people. We do what we can, but really not enough to help them heal, not just physically, but mentally as well. As an active duty Navy chief and a member, second vice commander of American Legion Post 86, we have men and women very brave that are still fighting today and we have men and women that need to be recognized that led the path for us that fought many years ago and they deserve the respect and the the honor to let them know that we truly care and we welcome them home with open arms with winter break on the horizon we wanted to give you a few ideas on what kids can do to have fun and learn something new during the holiday season we stopped by Twinbrook Community Recreation Center to learn more for our number four story. Welcome to Twinbrook It's a place with a positive, fun vibe and a place where everyone feels like family. 
say your parents are in there working out, you can, if you have a card, you can just go in here and play out or play table tennis or go in the computer room and stuff, so it's very fun. This is a place where you can get out the house, come down, play, and be with your friends. Why do you like coming to Twinbrook? Hmm, to play with my friends, play basketball, so, and use the computer to check my grades and stuff, uh, see the staff members, see how they're doing. Supervisor Kelly Day Terry is always looking for new programs to meet the needs of her members. We have tons of great things coming up for winter break. We have a winter break camp that we offer for our kindergartners through fifth graders. And we also are offering a, a basketball camp through the Wizards and Mystics for our eight year olds to 17 year olds. So we're really excited about that. And we also have a lot of special events coming up this month. We are having our um, parents night out and that's Friday, December 9th and it's a great opportunity for parents to drop off their kids so they can do some, um, finish that shopping, have a date night. So we're looking forward to that and hoping a whole bunch of parents sign up for that. This winter break, the Wizards and Mystics come to Rockville for a special holiday hoops camp. Senior Director of Camps and Clinics, David Deal, is looking forward to hosting the camp at Twinbrook. We have a great camp coming up. It's the Washington Wizards and Mystics Holiday Hoops Camp here at Twinbrook Community Recreation Center. It's a three-day camp, December 27th through the 29th. It's open to boys and girls ages 8 to 17. You know, a nice rounded camp, get some great basketball skills, improve them. And what's nice about our camp is we're open to all skill levels, and we gear the curriculum specifically for those kids and their particular skill levels. So, you know, um, whether you're touching the ball for the first time or an elite player, it's a nice camp to come to for sure. We have two goals, one, to make them a better basketball player, and two, to have an overall positive experience. So, you know, we work on skills on and off the court, you know, character, teamwork, sportsmanship. So we really preach that. So I think parents will be pleased with our efforts as well. We are a community family feel, and we love people to come into our building. We offer a variety of things. We also are always open to ideas. So if you come in and you want to maybe get us to start a new program, you never know. In addition to the Hoops Camp at Twinbrook, there's also a Winter Wonderland Camp being offered for grades K through 5. Kids will have the opportunity to participate in crafts, organize games, and sports. Go online to rockfilmd.gov slash Twinbrook to learn more. Also, the city's other recreation facilities are offering winter break programming we wanted to let you know about. At Thomas Farm from December 27th through December 30th, kids in grades 1 through 5 can enjoy winter break fun days where they can make crafts, play sports, and go on a field trip. Check out rockfilmd.gov slash Thomas Farm to learn more. Lincoln Park Community Center is sponsoring Snow Days Clubhouse over the winter break for ages 7 through 12, where kids can play sports, enjoy games, and a field trip, plus much more. Check out rockfilmd.gov slash LPCC to learn more. There's also winter break fun happening at the city's Croydon Creek Nature Center, located right on Avery Road. Kids ages 7 through 12 can learn about animal tracks, hiking, and enjoy a campfire, all happening on Friday, December 30th. Learn more at rockfilmd.gov slash Croydon Creek. And finally, for those kids in grades 6 through 10, there are many field trips and events happening for Rockville's teens, including tubing, pottery, and laser tag activities. Go online to rockfilmd.gov slash teens to learn more. We wanted to give you an update on three big capital improvement projects happening in the city for our number three story. We've been following the progress of the new police headquarters closely over the past few months and wanted to update you on how everything is tracking. Right now, the windows are being installed in the police department annex. The roof is complete on this structure, and the plan is to start hanging the drywall. The same goes for the police station. Also, the big item that's being focused on right now is bringing utilities on the site, including gas, water, sewer, and electric. Once the building is conditioned, then the construction crew will proceed with the finishes. The new police department is expected to be open in late spring. The senior center has been in the process of an exciting renovation to add a new fitness room and other recreation space. HVAC is being brought online, the finishes are being installed, and the glass is almost completely in place. Also, work has commenced in the parking lot. And the Goody Yard maintenance facility has been undergoing improvements where the construction of a new fleet services building and relocation of the fuel island, as well as upgrades to the stock room, have been happening. Superintendent of Parks and Facilities Steve Mater brought us up to speed on what you need to know. The building's actually up, the steel's up, we're all framed in, we're inside. Uh, since you've been here, we've uh, added walls, we've added uh, block. We are actually now in the process of putting up some of the lifts. Uh, we're also looking at, you know, you can see all the HVAC work going on, the heating ducts, air conditioning ducts. We'll soon be putting in the roll-up doors. Um, most of the water and sewer has all been connected, so we've done quite a bit since the last time you were here. The upgrades to the Goody Drive maintenance yard will allow the Department of Rec and Parks and Public Works to be more efficient and improve working conditions for city staff. 
Keep it on Rockville 11 as we continue to follow the progress of these three capital improvement projects. The city's Thanksgiving drive was a huge success, and now we're focusing on the city's holiday drive, which involves toys and monetary donations. Here's what you need to know to help make someone else's holiday very special for our number two story. There are many ways you can get involved with the city's holiday drive, including sponsoring a family for the December holiday, donating new toys for children under the age of 11, or making a donation through a tax-deductible monetary contribution, which will be used for fresh food and gift certificates for families in need. Call the city's Community Services Division at 240-314-8310 to learn more on how you can help this holiday season. Now for a roundup of some important information you need to know for our regular segment called Quick Hits. Rockville is now part of the Sustainable Maryland Certified Program. It's a new initiative from the University of Maryland and Maryland Municipal League. It's structured to build on the sustainability efforts Rockville has been achieving, such as Tree City USA, Workplace Wellness Programs, and the Green Power Community Challenge. To get involved in Rockville's sustainability program, email Erica Shingara at eshingara at rockvillemd.gov. We wanted to update you on Rockville's District 17 legislative priorities for this upcoming session at the Maryland State House. Here are the three priorities for the city. Restoration of highway user revenues, statewide stormwater management legislation, and legislation to allow non-sworn officers to sign off on speed camera violations. The general session kicks off in Annapolis in January and the delegation from District 17 will be working on these priorities for the city and we'll keep you posted right here on Rockville 11. And one final note, we're trying something new here in the Communication Division. We'd like you to send in photos to our Public Information Office showing off your holiday spirit. We'll choose some of the more festive photos and post them on the city's webpage and on Rockville 11. So go ahead and nominate your neighbor or yourself and show your seasonal spirit. Send your pics to PIO at rockvillemd.gov. That's it for this December edition of Rockville's 11. I'm your host, Bridget Breuer. And on behalf of the whole team here, happy holidays.